Hey guys, welcome back to our Urban Homestead. My name is Chelsea. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today we are going to be canning some meat. You're not going to believe how cheap this meat <laughs> is. So I'm going to be doing uh, a beef top round. So this is 10 and a half pounds and originally $84.00. Bam, $30, $30 for 10 and a half pounds of beef. You're not going to find a deal like that anywhere. Is it grass fed, organic, pasture? No, it's not. But you know what? It's still going to go on my shelves and it's still going to be delicious. And it's going to be a quick and easy meal at some future date. So. I'm going to show you how to get this prepped and then we're going to go through the canning process together. All right, so I've taken it out of the package. This is already pre-seasoned. Normally what I would do is cut it into chunks, put it in a big bowl, and I season with salt, pepper, um, garlic, and onion powders. That's water. <laughs> but this is already pre-seasoned. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get this cut up into about one inch uh, cubes and we will be back. All right got our big bowl of meat and now we're going to get these into the jars so since the meat is cold i'm going to be using the cold canning method and i'll explain that process along the way but anytime you're using a cold um, just like raw packing if you do raw pack chicken or i always do my meats raw packed cold canned so you want to have cold jars, cold meat, and your canner will be cold and you'll add cold water to that. So these jars are cold. They were uh, put in the dishwasher last night on sanitize mode. So they are good to go. We've got clean um, lids and bands. Want to make sure that your lids are in good working order. They pop back up. They're not damaged in any way. My funnel. Now we're going to start filling these jars. Make sure your hands are clean. This is about the size I do, like one inch cubes. Now you want to pack your meat pretty full, but you don't want to like jam it down packed. Um, let me get my towel, hold on. So as you can see, there's still plenty of room for the heat uh, during the pressure canning process to disperse through there and bring your food up to the correct temperature. Create a good vacuum seal and make your food safe to eat and safe to store. I only brought five jars out of the dishwasher, but I think I might get more than five. And you want to go to a uh, one inch headspace or to this top lip right here. All 
great. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to need more than five quarts. <laughs> never canned this cut of beef before. I typically do uh, chuck roast. So I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. Have any of you canned top round before? If you have, leave me a comment below and let me know. And so because I'm not familiar with this cut of meat and it is cooked to medium rare, I went ahead and made up some uh, beef broth. And I'm gonna add that to the jars. Normally when I do like my chuck roast, I don't add any meat because it does create its own juices. But like I said, I'm not familiar with this cut of meat, but for that price, I, you know, you can't pass that up, so. Yep, I think I'm gonna get two more quarts out of this. So I will be back in just a minute. Okay, so I got seven quarts and one pint of the meat. And now we are gonna fill it with our broth. I'm not going to fill the jar all the way with the broth because if this does create juices, I don't want my jars to siphon. Siphoning is where the liquid spills out into your canner and I don't like when that happens. So I'm going to fill the jars up to there. This is going to be so wonderful to have on the shelves. Beef stew, beef and noodles, stroganoff, soups. Some people like big chunks of meat in their chili. I don't. I like um, ground meat in my chili. more water to this <laughs> all right I'm gonna grab This little tool, you want to debubble, and all that is is going down around the sides of your jars and then in the middle. That's what I do. You want to release any air bubbles that are in there. This is a very important, get, go on, Gringo, process of canning.
All right, now we are going to wipe the lips very well with some vinegar. And then we're gonna get these babies in the canner. You wanna make sure that you always wipe your rims with vinegar, especially if you are canning meat product or anything sticky. You wanna make sure that there's no fat or anything that's going to prevent your jars from sealing. Fingertip tight, so only to where you could just tighten it with your fingers. You guys will see this on Monday, but today is actually Sunday. While this is canning, I'm gonna go clean the chicken coop and all that fun stuff. And then by the time I'm done, the canner will be done. So it'll work out perfect. All right, I have to grab some more lids for these and I'll meet you back at the canner. Okay, as I said, we're using the cold canning or raw pack method for this. I'm using my Presto. Um, my stovetop canner, the manufacturer instructions say three quarts of water in here. So I've put three cups of cold water, or three quarts of cold water. I'm going to add a splash of vinegar, and that's just going to keep my jars from clouding. <clears throat> We're going to load these into the canner. My pint didn't fit <laughs> and this is not big enough to um, this only holds seven quarts so I will just find a use for this I'm not gonna pull out my digital canner for one <laughs> pint I'm just not doing that <laughs> okay so we're going to put the lid on it We're gonna turn it on to medium heat. You don't want to crank this baby on high, and you know? here's why. Because it's cold water, our jars are, you know, room temperature, our meat is cold. If we were to put this on high, you would crack your jars, and that would be such a waste of the great deal that we got, right? <laughs> so, medium heat, we're gonna let this come up slowly, and then, it'll start venting and I'll bring you back once it starts doing that. Okay, so see that stream of steam coming up out of there? We are gonna set our timer for 10 minutes and let this vent for 10 minutes. Venting your canner is a very important part of the canning process. You don't wanna skip this step. What that does is it pushes the air out to create um, a good vacuum inside of your pressure canner once you put your weight on and it starts jiggling and I'll be back um, in 10 minutes. Okay, our 10 minutes are up. My valve back here is popped up. I'm going to go ahead and put my weight on. I know I've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it again. 
For those of you who don't know, I also am a moderator for the Facebook group called Canning for Dummies. It's a huge group. Uh, pop on over, answer the membership questions, and uh, tell us that I sent you over there. So I've been noticing a lot of uh, people, especially new canners, saying like, you know, I put my weight on, it's at 10 pounds for my elevation, but it's not jiggling, why? Okay, so this weight right here that comes with your canner is a 15 pound weight. So what that means is if I put this on, it's not going to, let me get this jiggler on while I'm talking. Um, it's not going to jiggle at 10 pounds. It'll only start jiggling at 15 pounds of pressure. So what I, which is not a problem, it's better to, you know, if, if you're gonna have a problem, it'd be better to have more pressure than not reaching your pressure. So I purchased this jiggler on Amazon. At the time it was $5, this was before the pandemic, so don't come at me if, it, <laughs> if it's like $30 or something now. <laughs> um, and this has a couple different, like this is a little ring that pops on it. Without the ring on it, it's five pounds. With that one ring, it's 10 pounds. And then it comes with another ring that you can put on it. And that would be 15 pounds. But this weight that comes with your canner is a 15 pound weight. So if anyone wonders why it doesn't jiggle at 10, that is why. So now I'm gonna wait for, um, this to come up to 10 pounds, it'll, mine will automatically start jiggling. Once it jiggles um, hard, I'm gonna turn the temperature down. I know my stove and my canner, and I'm gonna turn this down to um, medium low, medium. And then once I reach the pressure, I get that jiggle, I'm gonna set my timer for 90 minutes. 90 minutes for quarts of meat. If you were doing pints, it would be 75. Another important thing is if at any point in your canning process, you lose your pressure per your elevation, you need to start that time all over again. So it's kind of important to know your canner, or if you're new at canning, don't walk away from your canner, or at least keep your canner within earshot so you can hear that jiggler. So we're at about eight pounds of pressure right now, and I will be back in a minute when this uh, reaches 10 and starts jiggling. All right, we are jigglers a rockin'. So 90 minutes. I'm going to turn it down until it is a nice little rocking motion. And I'm going to go get my chores done. And I'll uh, see you back when the canner's done. All right, our 90 minutes are up. I turned the heat off. You want to let this come down naturally. Don't mess with anything. <laughs> Um, this could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how cool it is outside, how cool your house is, and really just however long it takes. So, after this has come down to pressure, I will remove the jiggler, untwist the lid, take that off and then I will let them sit in there for an additional five minutes before I remove them and we will be back to see how beautiful hopefully I've never done this before not well not this cut of meat we'll come back to see how beautiful these uh these look coming out of the canner okay so it took about a <clears throat> pardon me about a half hour for my canner to completely come to zero pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and take my jiggler off. And then open up the canner 
and just like kind of rest the lid on it. Please be very careful when you do this. There will still be steam that comes out and most of the time there is kind of like water condensation on the lid and it really does not feel good. <laughs> I'm going to leave that for five minutes and then I'll remove the lid and then we'll get these out of the canner. All right. It's been five minutes. I'm going to talk about why I feel that's important to do. So if I were to just take the lid off once it came down from pressure and start lifting my jars out, what you're going to find is is that liquid is going to come up out of your jar. You're gonna have a mess. You might not get a proper seal on your lid. And I just personally feel it's best if you wait five minutes to take them out. It lets them cool down even a bit more. It smells amazing. So I'm, it looks like I had no siphoning, so I, I feel like adding the broth, a little bit of broth, was really good. Look at that. It smells wonderful. I was so excited when <laughs> April came home, because she's the one that got the good deal. And uh, she's like, I have a surprise for you. And then showed me the meats and I was very excited. That's like, some, some girls like flowers. I like big hunks of meat that I can can. <laughs> so I'm putting, I always put my jars on a cutting board. If you put them on a counter, Please make sure that you uh, put a towel down or something. You don't want your hot jars to come in contact directly with your counter. That can also crack them, especially if you're fancy and you have like marble countertop. And you want to not all crowd them. You want to leave them a little bit of room. That way they can cool down nicely. Oh, it smells so wonderful. And they look absolutely beautiful. Yum. So I figured out what I'm gonna do with that pint that would not fit. We're grilling chicken and burgers, and I've got some like zucchini and peppers that we're gonna grill. So I think what I'm gonna do with that pint is just wrap it in some tin foil, um, pour just a bit of that broth on top of it, season it, and that's gonna go on the grill too, and we'll just eat it like that. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something for those of you canners who are new. And I hope you look for deals because let me tell you what, like $50 off, are you kidding me right now? That is a hell of a deal. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And until next time, abundance and blessings to you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.